Hello, welcome to Revelator Alf Bike Alive uh, podcast. Well, almost. Revelator Alf. Uh, yes, good evening, uh, everybody. Uh, from the UK and also far and wide. And uh, you can either watch this on uh, YouTube or actually from SoundCloud, uh, Revelator Alf. And uh, where you can download the podcast as well. So, uh, in this. Uh, what I'm really talking about uh, tonight is riding solo or riding in a group. Now, I'm not necessarily uh, talking about uh, going out, um, you know, on the road or going out as a as part of a big organised group. Let's say if you're in a club or anything like that. I'm more talking about whether you just go out by yourself riding or whether you go out uh, with a group of friends and you just go off to a destination, whatever it is. Now, which is best? You know, Should you go off solo, totally by yourself, or should you always go with a group? Well, first of all, I suppose, suppose you've got to ask yourself, what is the purpose of the ride? Now, if it's just you know, a group of friends going out riding, then yeah, go riding with a group. Um, if you don't know the, the people who you're riding with, that can be a bit of a problem because you don't really know each other's riding style. You don't really know uh, if the others are going to be able to keep up or, you know, you're going to be going at a slower pace. You don't know, you know, if uh, some are more risk takers than others, you know. So it's, it's one of those things that you have to look at um, the situation and you always, even if you're riding as a group or within a group or loose group, let's say, uh, you kind of have to ride as an individual. You know, whether you're going to make your overtakes and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then, you know, you kind of all meet up at junctions and, and then regroup and off you go again. Now, if you actually ride in as part of an organized group, then there are systems in place so you can, you know, um, all stay together as a group and be a lot more fluid in that way. The drop off system, there are lots of different names, lots of, lots of different ways to do it. Obviously, if you're in a club, a motorcycle club, then they'll have their own sort of procedures, you know, on how you should ride as a group. If you're in a tight formation, staggered formations, all, all this kind of stuff. Uh, but so, what I'm really talking about is whether you just ride out solo, or whether you ride as a group, or with a group of friends. Either ways can have its advantages, or can have real disadvantages as well. Um, so it really depends, you know, what what suits you best you know what do you like to do i mean do you i mean i'll give you a classic example i went out uh, riding a while ago with a couple of friends and there was about another three or four uh, guys came along who i didn't know and the problem is as we were riding along we you know we all got sort of disjointed and it was all over the place really and we kind of found our way but it and there was no dramas but it, it was it wasn't i would say a clean ride you know there was something about it that it wasn't really planned out properly or it you know we were all kind of doing our own thing um, whereas if we were we'd organized it a little bit better we planned it a little bit better if we knew each other a little bit better then possibly it would have been a lot it would have been, would be a lot more straightforward and it would have gone a lot more fluidly as well so that's part of it, you know, as I've already said, do you know the people you're riding with? You know, what do you all expect from it? What do you actually want to achieve from the ride? Do you all want to go to the same destination? Do you all want to go directly there? Do you want to drop off somewhere? That kind of thing. So that's really about talking on on-road riding. Now let's talk about back roads or trail riding or dirt bike riding, that kind of thing. Well, again, should you go out by yourself or go with uh, other people? Again, it really depends on you and also the expectations of the other riders as well on what they want to achieve and what their experience levels are and what they feel comfortable in doing as well. I mean, you know, it's a big thing to ask somebody to go off-road riding if they've never done it before or they feel intimidated. Uh, and, you know, you all have your different levels, different comfort levels. You're all on different bikes. So there could be, uh, you know, an element of risk that you're introducing into that ride where you know you don't really need to, you know. So it's one of those things. Now, I get I get asked this all the time, especially with my lot of my off road riding vlogs and you know moto adventures, moto explorer adventures, and travelog rides and everything like that. Because most of the time, in fact, all the time, I'm out by myself, riding these dirt trails right in the middle of nowhere, 
And people are saying, you know, why do you go out riding by yourself? And uh, isn't that dangerous and everything? Well, suppose if I was to adv advise anybody, you know, to go out riding, you know, out in the in the countryside or out in the you know on the trails, you know, my advice would be go out with somebody else. You know, have a riding buddy. I would always say that. So why don't I follow my own advice? And that's a good question, actually. And what I can't really answer, I suppose the primary reason is because of my my work um, timetable. I'm working all days and nights and things like that. I work a lot of weekends. Um, most of my daytime riding, uh, leisure time, if you will, is uh, during the week. Well, most of the people are working during the week. So, you know, my leisure times are different to other people's leisure time. And also, in many ways, I actually prefer going out during the week when other people are at work because there's less people out and about. If you ever go out riding on trails, you know, going riding on a weekend can be a bit of a pain, you know. And um, I'm not talking about going off riding illegal trails or anything like that or on private property. I'm not talking about I'm just talking about, you know, off-road trails, on byways, on approved actual dirt trails that you are allowed to ride motorcycles on. And it can be a bit of a pain, you know, going on these uh, rides because, because, yes, yeah, so there's just so many people there. It's, you know, you've got walkers, dog walkers, horse riders, you've got other bike, bikers, you've got uh, cyclists, you know, all this kind of stuff. You know, everybody's out on a leisure activity. And then, you, you know, whereas you just want to basically enjoy the ride and, and not have to wave to people or say hello to people all the time you know I don't want to make myself out to be a, you know a miserable old toad but you know it's a kind of it's nicer when there's nobody there now should, why don't so that's one of the reasons you know it's, it's basically circumstance that I just go out by myself and I'm not going to let the fact that I'm not with somebody make me not want to go and ride you know so I think you know that's the, the, the reason I suppose the other reason is that my style of riding um, it's kind of been honed over the last 40 years of riding. So, you know, I started very young. I started riding as a 10-year-old as a off-road uh, on dirt trails and farm tracks and things like that, over farm fields and everything like that. So I'm very used to that kind of riding. Um, so I know when to open the throttle, and when to really just creep along on, you know, trails and everything like that. So that doesn't mean that I haven't dropped the bike uh, because, you know, you're, you're kidding yourself or you're lying to yourself uh, if you think that you're going to go off-road riding uh, and anything more than just a hard, compacted trail, uh, you're never going to drop your bike because you will. At some point, you will drop that bike. It's inevitable. You know, you lose your footing, you lose a peg, the, the front tyre will get deflected and your handlebars will just go and then just with the blink of an eye, that's it, you're over. But the difference is that you're not going at pace. So if you're not if you're not riding fast, then you're just going to drop the bike and step off the bike and then just you know struggle to lift it back up if it's a really big heavy bike, which I've got. Um, so you know if you're wearing boots and you know a jacket and you should be okay. There shouldn't be a drama. But I've been to lots of bike accidents, off-road bike accidents, crashes where people really have done themselves an injury. It can happen. But I still think, you know, the, <coughs> excuse me, I've got a terrible cold, so, you know, so you'd have to excuse me. Uh, but the, you know, the notion of being able to go out and just go out into the wilderness and go out exploring and seeing something new, and you just alone with you, the bike and the elements, and that's just something, you know, it's, I don't want to say it's beautiful, but it's poetic. There's something really spiritual about it. Uh, and well, certainly for me, anyway. I've sort of always felt that. I've always felt about getting out in the back roads. That's why, you know, I love getting off the the main drag, getting off in the back roads on the twisty single track lanes, getting off on some byways somewhere, some dirt trails, um, getting some owner's permission so I can ride a few um, trails on some private land, whatever you know the case may be. You know, that's what I really enjoy doing. Um, you don't have to go off-road riding, dirt trail riding, to actually have that experience. As I say, you can get onto the real single lane, uh, back roads, uh, country lane somewhere, and you'll kind of have a very similar feeling as well. It really depends where they are. If you've got a, a lane that's going through some forestry as well, you know, that's 
beautiful. Just pull over to the side of the road, have a little walk around in the forest. Fantastic. Uh, and I do that quite a lot myself. Um, and I've never had a situation where I couldn't rescue the bike or I couldn't lift the bike by myself. I've never hurt myself. And, you know, you should never say never say never. You know, there'll always be a point where um, you could uh, hurt yourself. Uh, you could have a, a crash, whatever. Um, and, you know, you're right in the middle of nowhere. So you've got to take certain precautions. I mean, you know, I don't usually have side boxes full of kit on my bike, but I do have a top box. And the reason why I have a top box is, you know, I've got punch repair kit. I usually take a bit of fluid with me. I t you know, take the bare essentials to get me out get me out of trouble if I need to. I've got a med kit in there if I need to as well. Um, but I'm, I'm never going to use that really. Um, but, you know, the, the biggest thing I've got is my phone. You know, I'm working off GPS routes, so I'm, uh, you know, following Ordnance Survey Max, GPX routes, so I know exactly where I am at all time. I know I can, you know, call if I can get a, a signal, of course. Um, you know, I can, um, you know, call for the emergency services if, if I needed to, but I've never had to do that, thankfully. But I really enjoy going out riding by myself. And I suppose that's one of the reasons why I'm really ultra focused on the pinch points, the hazard points. Where can I, you know, open the throttle? Where can I really have to, you know, go at a crawl's pace, a snail's pace? Which, you know, really, I mean, I've made a few videos in the past. You know, check out the YouTube channel for that on, you know, um, analyzing the track ahead, you know, judging where, what you can do with the bike, what you can't do with the bike. You know, and that's, that's a big thing about off-road riding, trail riding, I should say. And I'm not talking about motocross here. I'm talking about, you know, dirt trail riding. Uh, and this is the kind of trails that you can go on any kind of uh, bike for the most part. Um, yeah, it might get dirty or whatever, but, you know, you can go out on a Harley for a, a sports bike, whatever. You know, as long as the trail is hard and compact, you'll be fine. It's when you start pushing it a little bit further and then you start to get into really muddy, rutted um, lots of potholes and things like that, so rocks, um, sand, you know, that kind of thing. That's where, you know, you need another kind of bike a little bit. So adventure bikes, big adventure bikes are great, but and I ride one of those. I ride the Triumph Explorer 1215cc as a 2017 model. But for the serious stuff, it is, it is very top heavy and it's very heavy as well. It's a shaft drives and it's also very heavy for that reason, but also uh, because it's just a big bike. Um, as I say, when the trail is hard and compacted, absolutely fine. It's a brilliant bike off-road, no problem at all. It's when you get into the serious stuff. And that's where you need a lighter bike, a smaller physical size bike. I've always said, you know, 125cc or 250cc is absolutely fine for getting out on the, um, the dirt trails. In fact, it's probably the ideal bike. You can step over it, you can manhandle it really easily because there will be a lot of manhandling of bikes. You're gonna have to get off the bike. You know, if you can't get it out, you might have to dig it out a little bit if you get stuck in the mud. If you get thrown off, if you drop the bike, which invariably you will, if you start, you're going to start challenging, uh, challenging yourself and pushing the envelope of dirt trails. So there's lots of things that you need to consider when you're out uh, riding and what kind of bike and what kind of ride you are. And, you know, are you capable of handling all this sort of stuff? Um, but I think there's there are certain points when you can say, right, I really enjoy riding a specific type of trail on a specific set of conditions and I can go out by myself. There's another type of trail or another set of weather conditions where you say, no, I'm not going to ride out by myself. Uh, I'm going to see if there's somebody else. Now, then it really depends if there's somebody who's really into your kind of riding. So it's one of those things, you know, you either actively search out people who you can ride with. Maybe there's an off-road riding club, a trail riding club, that kind of thing, enduro club that kind of thing, uh, or, or not, you might not have that opportunity. So it's, you know, it's one of those things you're never really going to know until you get out there and, you know, you start meeting people and talking to people. As I say, for me, I've never, it's, it's never been a main issue with me uh, to 
want to go and seek out other riders to, to go off riding because I just go and do it myself. I'm perfectly comfortable in doing it, but I'm very mindful of where I'm riding, the weather conditions and everything like that. I make lots of videos um, and I've written lots of blog posts on, on this subject matter. You know, it's about making the right judgments, making the right decisions, gathering all the information as much as you can. You know, don't, yes, it's good to push uh, the envelope and learn and grow as a rider, but never, you know, never jump too far. And sometimes you have to step back. You have to step back from, you know, where you think you are and where you're going to go. Road riding is completely different to off-road riding. Road riding it's a flat surface, it's a hard surface, and you know, whilst there is wet, dry, icy, muddy conditions, you know that the tire is going to interact with the surface in a you know particular way. You're never really going to be deflected, you know, off your path um, too much. Now, unless you hit a pothole on a bend or something like that, of course. But you can see the trail ahead and everything like that, and it's a big, wide road. Whereas off-road riding can be very narrow, it can be just the, the width, a rut can just be the width of um, the tyre, the front tyre. Um, the surface can be loose, can be um, you know very slippery, very muddy, you can sink into it, the front tyre may want to deflect, the rear tyre may want to you know, fishtail as it tries to gather um, grip. You know, there might be different slopes that want to make the bike slide down a slope as you're trying to traverse along. You know, there's lots of different things, obstacles in the way, you know, rocks, boulders, logs, fallen trees, whatever it is. And there's lots of things that can affect you. Big puddles, uh, which are not really an issue, but if the, the big puddle is masking a really big hole or a massive rut, I've actually been through a puddle which is actually on a big track to JCB uh, um, wheel mark. It ended up being about <coughs> 75 centimetres, 80 centimetres, nearly a metre deep, uh, This and the water actually came just below, or just above my, the bow wave came just um, nearly to the top of my tank. Luckily, it didn't go uh, into the air intake, which is just below that, and just sort of splashed around. <coughs> Excuse me. So that was that was an interesting one. And luckily, I got I got through there. Another time, I went across a river ford, a crossing. And I, you know, it got really deep at one point. And that came up to the top of the engine casings, uh, and then that was fine. I kind of judged that quite right. But right towards the end, there was a huge pothole, uh, and it was about it was about a foot deep. And it suddenly just the bike just sank in, and then I popped out the other side. Luckily, um, and you know, but but this is the kind of thing when you're pushing the envelope and you're grown as a rider and you're trying to, you know, judge things. You know, you you will come across situations which you haven't factored for, um, so you can get yourself into trouble. So if you are off the beaten track, you need to have a get out of jail. You know, card. You need to have a contingency, whether it's a phone, whether you've told people where you're going to go, the trail which you're riding. So, just because you're not with other people doesn't mean that you can't go out riding by yourself. And so, I'm a great believer in that. I'm a great believer in, you know, if if you if you can go out riding with people, that's absolutely great. But just bear in mind, you know, I wouldn't go out with a, especially off-road riding. I wouldn't go out with a really big group of people. You know, two, three, four people max, something like that. Make sure you all want to do the same thing and you want to achieve the same thing. Make sure that you're all going to sort of stick together as a group and help each other out. But also be resilient enough to, you know, be able to sort yourself out and help yourself out if you do get into trouble as well. Going off road riding with other people is so much easier in that if you do drop your bike, then you can get other people to help you if you are struggling. And that's what will happen, you know, if you, the more off-road riding you do, if you go out for longer periods of time, especially in the summer when it's really hot and you're drained, you're physically drained, I mean, I can go out for a six, seven hour enduro ride, trail ride, you know, and, you know, but by the end of it, it it's tough. It's tough, cause especially if you're, you know, manhandling a big heavy bike and ruts and everything like that. You have to, you know, lean it over a couple of times, you have to pick it back up, you know, it's it's a tough ask. So, you know, you know, that fatigue element is something that you have to 
you know, be really mindful of and really um, factor into your thinking as well, you know. But, um, yes, I mean, so, I mean, I, my advice would always be to go with a group of riders uh, and make sure you have like-minded, like-minded riders as well. It can be a lot easier. But say you are sticking to other people's, you are thinking for the group as opposed to thinking for yourself. I think sometimes, myself as a rider, I've found that actually going out by yourself is, it's, you're not thinking anybody else. You're making your own decisions, good or bad, you know, whether your reasoning is right or wrong, you're making your own decisions. And you've got to make sure those decisions are right and you've got to be able to review those decisions once you've made them to see actually if it's working out for you. That feedback system, that loopback system in your decision making is so critical, especially when you're off-road riding, especially when you're going off the beaten track, especially when you're going off into the mountains, you know, and or, you know, wherever it is, and there's nobody around, you've got to fend for yourself. You know, um, last year I was out in the mountains in uh, Europe and Italy, you know, I got right up into the middle of the mountains, you know, I basically told people where I was going to go. Um, they all thought I was mad, but I thought, no, I can get it. And there was a couple of hair-raising moments out there, you know. And um, <coughs> But lucky, you know, it was, um, well, luckily, but by design, you know, it, it was absolutely fine. But, you know, there are certain things that you have to be aware of. And it's like your own limitations, the bike limitations, the, you know, the, the weather of the day, the, the surface, all these factors come into play. And you won't really know until you're actually in the thick of it whether it's you know whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. You know, as I say, you know, the smart move is always to go out with somebody. But if you can't, then you have to learn to adapt and learn to be able to, you know, ride off road or on the back roads by yourself and just deal with the situations. So I've made you know quite a few other videos about what equipment I take with me, and it's interesting. You know, I used to what well, I still do actually. Um, not so much now this time of year in the winter and the spring, but certainly in the summer months uh, from now on, um, I would always take a saw, a folding saw in my top box and an axe, a uh, camping axe about that, that big. And people said, well, why would you do that? I said, well, actually, if you've been on the trails like I have where the, the trees have fallen across uh, and or big branches have fallen across and, you know, you've got nowhere you turn the bike around because it's a really narrow trail let's say and you have to get through it but you have to be able to fight your way through sometimes or if you really want to carry on on this trail and uh, there's only one way you're going to have to you know fight your way through so you have to start thinking of ways of being able to um you know still keep on rolling and i talk about this all the time it's you know rolling you know keep on rolling whatever you do make sure that you have the capacity um, to the physical capacity, the mental capacity to keep on rolling and be self-sufficient on the you know uh, off-road riding, uh, or if you're going on a long endurance ride as well. I mean, or long distance ride. I mean, I used to love uh, endurance riding as well. Um, so I used to do quite a bit. I, uh, I one of my famous ones, I suppose, if you like, the one that I was most proud of is I, I rode all the way around the UK in 24 hours. Uh, so that's 1,450 miles, um, went uh, from Reading, uh, just west of London, all the way down to the southwest to uh, Plymouth, then into Wales to Swansea, all the way up to uh, Glasgow and then Edinburgh, back down to Newcastle, back down to London, all the way to Kent and then back into Reading. 24 hours, 1,450 miles, completely by myself, all alone. And that took planning, that took training, you know, to train my body to be able to ride that long and also to fend off fatigue. And so I did a lot of research in nutrition and, you know, keeping the energy levels up and all that sort of stuff. And, um, but that was out by myself, you know. So you could say, well, why, you know, you could have done it with somebody else. The problem is that, that kind of ride, if you try to do it with more than one other person, you're going to have a problem. Because it's so taxing on the body, it's you know it's mentally tiring, and some people you know and there's it's a real it's you know you're never quite sure whether you're going to be able to do something or not do something. And I certainly found on that ride, the first half of the day, 
I was pacing myself, I was stopping regularly, I was taking 10, 15 minute breaks here and there. As the, as the day progressed, it got into night and got into like 18 hours, it was very much right, pull into a you know, garage, a petrol station, right, quickly top up, you know, quick um, you know, sugar bar, uh, chocolate bar, off I went. You know, it was time to push on, I've got to push on, I keep on going. It was a mindset to never give up and just keep on going. Other people may not have that. And the weather was terrible, it was raining, it was blowing a gale, it was, it was awful. But, you know, the, the, and, you know as the, the night drew on, it was really cold as well. It got down to freezing temperatures, it was like minus, minus two as well or something like that. It was a hell of a, a, hell of a ride, it really was. But I really, and to this day, I still, I'm still adamant that if I was with somebody else, I wouldn't have been able to achieve it. I really don't think. Certainly, if I was with one other person, possibly. More than one person, definitely not. Unless you come to an agreement to say, we're doing this as completely as individuals. We'll start off at the same, and we'll probably end up you know, at the same uh, destination. Um, but we're not riding together. Now you kind of think, well, there's no point in even you know, starting together. You might as well just ride off as individuals, and I think that's the problem. You know, you've got to decide what you want out of this. It always comes back to the the very initial point: what do you want out of uh, what do you want out of the ride? Do you want the ride for companionship? You know, what, what is it about motorcycling that you want? Do you want companionship? Do you want a club scene? Do you want um, a brotherhood? You know what? You know what is it? Do you want the social life? Do you want motorcycle rallies? Do you want to go to big motorcycle events? Uh, do you want to go to a, like I don't know, whatever I don't know. You know, um, like a big custom show, um, a big motorcycle gathering, like a Hastings or I don't know in the US. I don't know Sturgis or Daytona or something. Like that. I and mean, if that's what you crave, if that's what you want, that's fine. That's not what I want. I mean, I, I've never really got into, I never rode motorcycles from a young age, even getting into on-road riding to be part of a social group or necessarily to be part socially accepted or that's not what riding for me is about. Riding for me is actually being on the road and the experience and getting out there and doing things. The social side of it, the interaction, the people I've met along the way, that's incidental that or coincidental. That's that's an added bonus, if you like, but that's not the primary reason. So you've got to figure out what your primary reason is for not only getting into motorcycling, but also um, what's the primary reason that you want to do a particular ride, or you want to go on road riding or off road riding. You know, is it <coughs> is it just a destination thing? Is it <coughs> excuse me? Is it a destination thing? Is it a commuting thing? Is it a leisure thing? You know, are you, you know, are, are you intending to ride solo for a specific reason? Are you intending to ride as a group for a specific reason? Don't get me wrong, riding in a group has so many added benefits. Because um, there is a, a sense of togetherness, there's a sense of being um, part of a hive mentality, a hive mind when you're riding within a group in a pack, if you like. Um, you know, it's it's just nice. It's just a nice feeling. You know, you're going down the road, and you know, say it depends where you are in the order of the, the bike. You know, but you've got you know twenty or thirty, forty, I don't know, hundreds of bikes ahead of you, and it's nice. It's a nice feeling. But I wouldn't say I want to do that all the time. I wouldn't say I want to say right, okay, I'm well, all my riding is going to be group riding. So it's you know really problematic. I think when you've got a big open road. Group riding is a lot easier. When you've got lots of traffic jams, the traffic that we got in the UK, group riding is more problematic, getting people together. If you've got really experienced riders against versus really inexperienced riders, that can be a real big issue as well. And I know lots of riding clubs or organizations or motorcycle clubs who have struggles with this actual thing about keeping their keeping their members uh, in check, in line, making sure that they stick to the riding group policy or the group program, you know, the protocol. You know, it's, it's, it's a difficult thing to, 
to master, but once you've mastered it, it should be quite slick if the conditions are right, if the conditions are not right. So that's why they have these systems in place, these drop-off systems and so on and so forth, where you know you you can keep uh, everybody together, keep everybody going in the same direction and everything like that. But I say it always comes back down to the initial point. You know, what's your purpose? You know, do you really enjoy that aspect of socialising, the social aspect of it? Do you really enjoy the group riding aspect of it? Do you really enjoy the, the the solo aspect of it? I mean, for me, as I say, it was always about myself on the motorcycle, the ride, the the feeling of riding. It was never really about, um, you know, riding as part of a procession. You know, it's nice to get me wrong every now and again, but it's not what I strive for. It's not what I aim for. You know, I don't get out of bed in the morning and think, oh, I've got to go and ride my bike in a procession, or I'm not doing anything today because I haven't got any riding buddies. I think if that's if that's your the way of thinking, then I think you're going to struggle with, you know, riding motorcycles. You know, I think you know motorbikes. You know, because it it is in in essence it is a solitary existence being on a motorcycle. It's just you and the bike anyway. You know, whether you got somebody as a pillion with you, whether you got somebody beside you. You are enclosed, whether you've got a helmet on or not, depends on where you are in the world, but it's just you and the bike, you know. So, you know, it's, for me, it, it all, that allure was always there. And I think I've taken that into the off-road riding world as well. The off-road riding world, I, 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 I always loved getting out into the countryside seen somewhere new but I think it's the adventure of going out somewhere new and seeing new things and not going out because I want to go at pace I mean I've you know I've hurled um, I've hurled motorbikes down runways at 180 miles an hour I've been on race tracks uh, you know and um, you know got my knee down and buzzed around and you know hit race tracks where I'm uh, you know, being shown up by some really impressive riders, you're trying to catch up and you can't, you know, but, so I've done all that, but speed isn't really my thing, actually, it's not an age thing, I was never really into speed that much, I was more into exploring, going out and seeing different things, I think that's why I love off-road riding so much, because I can go out of adventure, I can go explore, I can test myself and push myself with my bike, and just go and see different things. So that's for me what I love to do, you know. And also making videos and you know, so the YouTube channel was always really good, and the blog and obviously everything associated with it. So if I can share what I see, then maybe you can encourage other people to go and do that kind of thing as well, which is you know always a good thing. I think. I think that you know that's part of the the reason why I started the, this whole Revelator Elf was was about sharing what I do and what I enjoy doing. It was never it was never about getting subscribers or getting views or anything like that. It was always about and it still is. It is still about just sharing what I know, what I do. If there's something like that helps me, maybe I can help you. If there's something that I've learned or somewhere that I've been that I want to share, that's what I'll share it. So Anyway, I'm rambling on quite a bit, and you can probably hear that my voice is going uh, quite, quite significantly now. Um, but anyway, anyway, so this has been the uh, bike live, uh, almost live uh, podcast. I uh, say so talking about uh, riding solo or riding groups depends what you want to get out of it. Um, Probably always, especially if you're going off road riding, especially if you're going out in the wilderness, it's probably not a bad idea to go off with somebody, a riding buddy. Certainly tell people where you're going, always take a mobile phone with you, that kind of thing. You know, just, just be sensible about it, sensible about it. Just think about things before you go out. Don't hoon about, you know, just uh, take things nice and leisurely, nice and slowly, especially when you're going off road riding for the first time as well. Right. Well, hope you found this. Uh, useful <laughs> and uh, if you want to please uh, subscribe and uh, 
follow me on the uh, SoundCloud as well, Revelator Alpha, or the podcast. Uh, check out the website and uh, check out all the resources page as well. Lots of information there. And I've put, I'll just recently put um, a load of articles, uh, riding articles, safety articles from the Heli Bikes days. The Heli Bikes Mates, so I call Safety Initiative, which I used to run for years. Uh, so if you want to go and check that out, that'd be really good as well. Anyway, so, uh, well, I'll catch you on the next Bike Alive. Coming soon, I would have thought, when the throat and the cold is gone. I would have thought. Cheers now. Revelator L.